The Mardi Gras hangover is barely over for some, and here we are just a few days away from the, another excessive celebration of drinking and drunkenness, St. Patrick's Day. Oh, there's no need to worry. There's plenty of booze, and we can be sure the serious partiers will rally to the cause. Celebrating drunkenness and debauchery is bad enough. In case you don't know, Mardi Gras beads are exchanged for women showing their breasts. But doing it in the name of God is a whole different level of sin. Think about it. Both are connected to so-called Christian events. Now, you may be wondering what any of this has to do with our study of God's judgment on Judah recorded in Isaiah 5 here on Morning Minutes in the Bible and an American Missionary. It's actually quite simple. Yes, as some today correctly point out, they were condemned for injustice and violence, Isaiah 5 verse 7. But they were also condemned for drunken debauchery, Isaiah 5, verses 8 through 12. Listen to Isaiah. Woe to those who add house to house and join field to field until there is no room, so that you have to live alone in the midst of the land. In my ears the Lord of hosts has sworn, Surely many houses shall become desolate, even great and fine ones, without occupants. For ten acres of vineyard will yield only one bath of wine, and a homer of seed will yield but an ephah of grain. Woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may pursue strong drink, who stay up late in the evening that wine may inflame them. Their banquets are accompanied by lyre and harp, by tambourine and flute, and by wine. But they do not pay attention to the deeds of the Lord, nor do they consider the work of his hands. Isaiah 5 verses 8 through 12. It does us, and the Lord's cause, no good if we condemn one while excusing the other. Yet that seems to be an all-too-common problem in religious circles. One group condemns sensual sins, drunkenness, and debauchery, while overlooking or even justifying certain social sins, injustice, and violence. Another group sees the inconsistency and reverses it, without seeing their own inconsistency. Both consider themselves spiritual, and perhaps even superior to the other perhaps raising their sin of partiality to outright hypocrisy. When will we learn to understand God's righteous fury rests upon both equally? Let's stop excusing sin in whatever form it takes or whomever practices it. God will forgive sin, but does not excuse it or us either if we try to say it's okay to keep on sinning. Romans 6 verses 1 and following. Thank you for watching Morning Minutes in the Bible on An American Missionary. Until next time, this is James McClenney hoping you have a great day.